writing. As one woman said, it has not ended my life. I am still a very viable human being, as are others with the same diagnosis. Certainly I grieve the onset of this disease, but after talking with the local Alzheimer's Society rep, I now attend an early stage support group and feel good about volunteering for the organization. Once again, I am allowed to feel useful. Madam Speaker, we must strive to ease the burden of every individual struggling to recall a spouse's name, every person unable to recognize a child's face, and every family member or friend who brings them comfort and care. We must seek hope for all families struggling with Alzheimer's disease. We must renew our commitment to research that is improving treatments for this illness and may one day prevent it entirely. We must leave no avenue unexplored. Madam Speaker, in closing, it is fundamentally important to make sound fiscal decisions. As President Obama said, the answers to our problems don't lie beyond our reach. We absolutely have the opportunity to change the course of Alzheimer's disease now. Today we have a variety of disease-modifying treatments, but shrinking investment in Alzheimer's research threatens breakthroughs. Investing in research to end Alzheimer's is one of the most sensible decisions the government can make. It not only saves lives, but also saves money by reducing the burden on health care. Madam Speaker, finally, we must commit to a national brain strategy for Canada, working with the provinces and the territories. Our party has committed to this with focus on key pillars such as awareness and education, prevention, treatment and support, caregiver support, research and income security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate of the Honourable Member for Halifax. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm very pleased, very, very pleased to have the opportunity to speak to uh, M474, a motion respecting Alzheimer's, from the member from Edmonton Leduc. This debate offers us the chance to look at the specific challenges facing individuals with Alzheimer's and the family and friends that love and care for them, but it also gives us the opportunity to open up the debate and discuss larger challenges that exist within Canada with respect to long-term community care and home care, disease prevention, healthy living, health education, and poverty, just to name a few, because they're all connected, Madam Speaker. The challenges that Alzheimer's bring to the lives of many are really a microcosm of the challenges throughout our entire system, like the rising cost of medications, the fact that we need national standards for things like access and care, uh, the need for processes nationally that allow for the sharing of best practices, and the need to help families with the emotional and financial weight of caregiving. I have seen and experienced this weight myself, Madam Speaker. Uh, my mother was a psych nurse at a nursing home and also a single mother, so if you can imagine, I spent a good deal of my childhood in a nursing home. And I have seen families dealing with Alzheimer's and dementia firsthand, the different ways that it impacts families as well as the people with Alzheimer's and dementia, the range of responses to what's happening uh, to themselves but also to their loved ones. And also my grandmother had Alzheimer's and in the early stages of her disease I was actually the primary caregiver living with her. It's only now, Madam Speaker, that I have a better understanding of the stress uh, that I was under that later my mother and my uncle were under, uh, the stress that we didn't fully understand as it was happening. This greater understanding that we have of our own health very much includes brain diseases like Alzheimer's. But these are diseases that were traditionally stigmatized and hidden from view. And with this motion, we actually have the chance to rid ourselves of the fear of discussing aging the way that it affects our minds, the way that it affects our bodies, and the difficulties that come with caring for someone who's losing control over their mind, over their memory, perhaps over their freedoms and over their relationships. And I think this motion calls for some very important things. It calls for the recognition for a right to dignity of patients, 
the emotional and psychological toll that Alzheimer's takes on family members, the increasing costs on the health, health systems related to treatment and care, and it also draws attention to the roles of civil society organizations that are tackling Alzheimer's head first and, and straight on. As my colleagues have mentioned in their speeches, Alzheimer's is a serious and devastating disease that puts incredible strain on families, relationships, and a patient's sense of self. The statistics are staggering, and there is a gender lens to this, Madam Speaker. One in six women and one in 10 men who reach the age 55 can expect to develop Alzheimer's in their lifetime. It's a staggering number for me when I realized uh, that, when I, when I read that statistic, Madam Speaker. And these numbers mean that we need swift and comprehensive action to address Alzheimer's in Canada, especially with our aging population, the quote unquote gray tsunami. We really need to have a national framework, a pan-Canadian framework that brings together all levels of government federal, provincial, territorial, and First Nations, brings them all together with a common goal of improving responsiveness of our system with respect to diagnosis and provision of services, but also with respect to long-term care strategies and the sharing of best practices. Federal leadership is needed, and the government is obligated under the Canada Health Act to ensure universality of care, national standards, and best practices across the country for all areas of health care, not just Alzheimer's, and, but particularly for a disease like Alzheimer's and other brain diseases that affect so many people in every corner of Canada. While I support this motion's focus on Alzheimer's, I really think we need to have an expanded scope to include other brain-related uh, brain diseases. Alzheimer's is just one in a number of brain diseases like ALS and Parkinson's. Each of these diseases really has similar effects on the lives of patients and their families. Increased emotional and psychological burdens, increased financial burdens, the loss of mobility, the loss of freedom. Because of these similarities, I think that brain diseases can be addressed as a group, with respect, of course, given to the differences among these different diseases, because I'm sure differences do exist, but really with a common goal to better the lives of Canadians. While this is a private member's motion brought forward by the member from Edmonton Leduc to address a problem that he recognizes in his community that we recognize in our communities, I think that this motion actually showcases the Conservatives' piecemeal approach to health. We need action. We need a national strategy to deal with the issue of Alzheimer's and other brain diseases. Alzheimer's cannot be discussed in a vacuum. Addressing the inherent issues adequately necessitates a larger discussion of our system as a tool for caring for our friends, families, and neighbours. While economic and social injustices are permitted to exist in Canada, the health of Canadians will continue to suffer, Madam Speaker, and families will continue to tread on difficult financial and emotional ground. Providing dignity for patients, as this motion calls for, will not happen as long as this government continues to work against ensuring true universality of care across the country. Dignity will not come if they abdicate their role under the Canada Health Act. We will see true dignity established when we can establish pan-Canadian standards for care, including long-term care, home care, community care, and palliative care. Ensuring a suite of care options that individuals and families can take advantage of will recognize issues of dignity, difference in circumstance, and different familial capabilities. It will also address some of the emotional and psychological toll that brain diseases take on family members by creating stability and fluidity of care and service. And as we know, Madam Speaker, a care strategy would also reduce costs on the system because the more long-term care beds, then People who are in acute care beds, those acute care beds won't be taken up by people who should, who should actually be placed in long-term care at a quarter of the cost. A national strategy for addressing brain diseases will lead to cost savings and will better the lives of Canadians. 
Alzheimer's affects families at large, but it's important to mention that Alzheimer's exacts a particularly large toll on women. Women, as I mentioned, are statistically more likely to develop Alzheimer's. And further, women are, in general, more often tasked with taking care of relatives who need living assistance due to Alzheimer's and other health conditions. If we took gender equality seriously in this house, we would already have a strong caregiving strategy, and we would already have a strong Alzheimer's strategy. This motion, while it is certainly well-intentioned and I support it and it's respectful of the issues facing families affected by Alzheimer's and it is worthy of support, I still would like to see action by this government to address the daily needs of those living with Alzheimer's and those caring for loved ones with Alzheimer's and other brain diseases. We need to bring together the different levels of government, as I have said. While I continue to hope for real action on brain diseases by this government, I will be very happy to vote in favour of this motion on Alzheimer's, and I look forward to it being brought forward in the House for a vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Verchères, Les Patriotes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Following the publication of the World Alzheimer Report by Alzheimer's Disease International on September 21st, the member for Edmonton, Leduc, proposed this motion. The report uh, paints an alarming picture of the costs to the healthcare system due to Alzheimer's disease. There are apparently 36 million people with Alzheimer's in the world or 120,000 in Quebec alone. That figure will increase to 66 million in 2030 and 115 million in 2050. That's the number of people in the world who will have Alzheimer's. In terms of the financial impact, the, world, the cost to the world of dementia will exceed 1% of world GDP in 2010 or $604 billion U.S. In the motion today, it's a matter of increasing costs for the treatment of